when Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly, abundantly translates into having life to overflowing, being filled with the Spirit, this zeal, this passion, this fervor, this conviction, this sense of destiny. And this transmutes you from the, an ordinary human who can only accomplish ordinary things, transmutes you into a Spirit-filled shaman where the extraordinary, the off the chart, all things are possible when you're filled with this life, spirit, presence. And I've said that this is the discipline I'm using even with my sweetie because of circumstances being taken away from me 3,000 miles away to take care of this business, which will take we don't know how long. So just like the disciples, Jesus was gone for good. They would never see him in the flesh again. I will see her in the flesh again because that is my certainty, my conviction, our destiny, which I guzzle. All of us in this spirit-filled shaman hour community, we're all guzzling that spirit presence with the same all-out fervor, knowing that this is the only important thing, as they say with the disciples, after this final appearance of Jesus, they rushed to the temple and prayed day and night. They were guzzling the only important thing. Another example uh, from our Judeo-Christian tradition of this flamboyance, this flair for the dramatic that the Holy Spirit has, because on the Friday, when he finally expires on the cross, the Holy Spirit announced itself very flamboyantly with these earthquake with an earthquake in the temple in Jerusalem. It was so powerful that the, the veil of the inner sanctum was ripped in half. And this earthquake was so powerful it opened the tombs of the saints and they go sweeping up to heaven. So very, very flamboyant. And then another earthquake, of course, on Easter morning, rolling the stone away. So powerful that the, the stone of the tomb was rolled away and he vanishes. So two earthquakes, very flamboyant, very dramatic. The trademark of the Holy Spirit. You know the, the spirits around if, if these kind of dramatic, supernatural, miraculous displays are made evident. That first earthquake, as he expires on the cross, it was dramatic enough that that Roman centurion who witnessed this he was converted on the spot. He says, truly, this was the Son of God. Everyone thinks it's a false prophet. He failed in his mission. He's mocked there on the cross. The Roman centurion, he's just an objective observer. He wasn't a believer. He was converted on the spot. Truly, this was the Son of God. He was made to believe by his irrefutable direct experience of the source's presence, 